Imagine you have a bunch of students that you need to assign to a bunch of dorm rooms. Each student has preferences over these dorms. So, for example, the first student has dorm 2 as a top choice, followed by dorm 1, and then dorm 3. Assuming each dorm has one empty room, how exactly would you assign dorms to students if you know their preferences? How do you define what a good assignment is? Sometimes it's obvious. This assignment has to be good because everyone got their top choice. But we can't always assign everyone their top choice because there might be a conflict, so things are not generally so clear-cut. When there are lots of people and lots of houses, we get a complicated matching, and we need to be able to determine whether this matching is good for us. But defining a good matching is not the trickiest part. I'm kind of introverted, and sometimes it's hard to deal with other people. Especially when they say something, but they're thinking something totally different. We have to deal with the possibility that people report preferences that they don't actually believe as a way to gain the system. And we also want to design a system that incentivizes participation. Otherwise, people may choose not to switch dorms or to find off-campus housing which is something we'd like to avoid. So although this is an optimization problem with a goal that's vaguely like maximizing social welfare, there's also an economics part that deals with game theory and people's incentives. And there's a computer science component that deals with designing algorithms and analyzing runtime. This is called the house allocation problem, which is part of a field called algorithmic game theory. This field is motivated by a lot of real-world problems. So far, we've been talking about students in dorms, but this model can generally just be about people having preferences over a bunch of objects. The main requirement is that only one side has preferences over the other side. This covers lots of situations. For example, we can have high school students and public schools, and this is called the school choice problem. Or we can have kidneys and patients who need a kidney transplant. This is called the kidney exchange problem. Both of these problems have a lot of ongoing research. But for this video, we'll stick to students in dorms for simplicity. And we'll begin with this question from before, how do we define what good means? To answer this, let's try to find a good matching for this example. Suppose we give Alice and Bob their first choice, but Carol gets her last choice. Is this a good matching? It's a little hard to say, actually. Maybe we don't want any student to get their last choice. So maybe giving every student their second choice is actually better, because it's more fair. But not everyone will agree with this. However, what's not controversial is if we simply swap Bob and Carol's assignments so Bob gets Storm 2 and Carol gets Storm 3, the result has to be better. Both Bob and Carol are happier because they went from their second choice to their top choice. And Alice's happiness stays the same. So giving everyone their second choice intuitively can't be optimal. Economists say this situation is not Pareto optimal, which is where we can make someone happier without making anyone else less happy. If we can make this happen, then why not do it? So this matching is clearly not optimal. But after swapping, the only person we can make happier is Alice, but to do that, she would need to take Carol's assignment. Then either Carol takes Dorm 1, which makes her less happy, Bob indifferent, and Alice happier, or Bob takes Dorm 1, Carol takes Storm 2, which makes both Bob and Carol less happy. So Alice's happiness comes at the expense of someone else. And that's the definition of Pareto Optimal. The only way to make someone happier is if someone else becomes less happy. And intuitively, this seems to be a good property to have. But it's also not sufficient on its own. There are bad solutions that are Pareto Optimal. To see this, suppose we have Alice and Bob again, 
and a million dollars to divide between them. Alice only gets a dollar, and the rest goes to Bob. This is Pareto optimal because in order to make Alice happier, you have to take away money from Bob, which will make him less happy. This allocation is unfair to Alice, but Pareto optimality doesn't care about fairness. On the other hand, suppose for the million dollars we had this allocation, where we burn one dollar and don't give it to either person. This is much fairer and it's probably more desirable, but this is not Pareto optimal because if we gave that dollar to Alice, she'd be happier while Bob stays the same. So you might be thinking, what's the point of Pareto optimality if it's not necessarily good? And the point is, people will have different priorities for a solution, and they need to decide on what that means for their use case. But regardless of the situation. Everyone can agree that Pareto optimality is a good property to have. So Pareto optimality is a good starting point, and this is going to be our next goal. Though it might be hard to even know where to begin with answering this question. So let's start with a simple example. Ideally, we want to give everyone their top choices, but usually this isn't possible. For David, though. Only he wants Storm Three, so assigning him to it seems pretty natural. But who do we assign Storm One to? One idea is just to randomly choose Alice, Bob, or Carol with one third equal probability, maybe by rolling a die. This method seems to be quite fair to everyone. Let's say we roll our die and Alice gets chosen. So now we have Bob and Carol left. And let's try to give them their second choice, which happened to both be Dorm Four. Again, we can break this tie by randomly choosing one of them with one half probability. Let's say Bob gets Dorm Four and Carol ends up with her least favorite dorm. This matching is Pareto optimal. Alice and David have their top choice, so they don't want to switch with anyone, and Bob will never want to switch with Carol. So there's no way to make someone happier without making someone else less happy. This algorithm tries to give people the best option they can get while breaking ties with equal probability, so it seems very fair. Plus, you can show it always returns a Pareto optimal assignment. Now, this algorithm seems perfect, so this means we're done, right? The answer is not quite. It turns out it's very prone to manipulation. After Carol was assigned her least favorite dorm, she realized it was because she put dorm one as her top choice, where she only had a one-third chance of being picked. Her second choice isn't that bad in her opinion. So the following year, she decides to swap four and one in her rankings. But now, since only she put Dorm Four as their top choice, she's guaranteed to be assigned to it, and David to Dorm Three. Then only Bob and Alice are tied for Dorm One, and suppose Alice gets chosen for Dorm One, so Bob ends up with Dorm Two. In the end, Carol still likes Dorm One the most, but by lying, she's guaranteed to be assigned Dorm Four, which is her actual second choice. This phenomenon is kind of like having a super cute girl that everyone likes. You like her as well, but she's totally out of your league. So instead, you go for the slightly less attractive girl who everyone is ignoring. Then over time, other people also realize they have no shot with the popular girl, and the less attractive girl ends up with more attention. We want to avoid the situation where over time people become more and more manipulative. And everyone starts lying about their preferences. It's far better to have a system where people are incentivized to be honest. This leads us to this idea of strategy proofness, which is where being honest is the best strategy, regardless of what everyone else is doing. So even if you know someone is lying, telling the truth is a dominant strategy and will always lead to the best outcome for you. Then you don't need to guess what other people are doing. All you need to do is tell the truth. So now we're masochists and make our lives even more difficult. 
can we get Pareto optimal matchings while also having a strategy-proof algorithm? This seems harder, but there exists a very simple idea that satisfies both properties. And it's just to order the students in some way and have them pick dorms one at a time. Carol's first, and she has dorm one as her top choice, so she would get assigned to it. Then Bob is next, but because dorm one is taken, he has to choose dorm four, his second choice. And we continue like this until everyone chooses a dorm. This simple method has to be strategy proof. If it's Bob's turn and he doesn't choose dorm four and he chooses dorm two instead, then the only person he's hurting is himself. And I'll skip the proof, but we also always get Pareto optimal assignments from this. This method of fixing some ordering of students and then having them choose dorms one at a time actually has a name. It's called serial dictatorship because every student gets to feel like a mini dictator with the power to choose where they want to live. This is a very simple idea. Maybe it seems a bit too simple, but it gives us Pareto optimality and strategy proofness, which is what we need. Though there's still one detail that's a bit vague, which is how do we choose this ordering of students? Now, if all we care about are these two properties, the order doesn't matter. Any order works. But the order does matter in practice. The last person ends up with the fewest options, so it's a bit unfair. If we're evil, we can force Alice to go last in every year. All the matchings would still be Pareto optimal, but Alice would be pissed off. But we're nice people. One way to make things more fair for Alice is to take all possible orderings and to choose one of them with equal probability. Here, there are four factorial or 24 possible orderings, so each order has a 1 out of 24 chance of being chosen. Then, there's an equal probability for anyone to be last, so most likely, Alice won't be last every year. In reality, colleges will have priorities, like it may want fourth years to choose first, followed by third years, and so on. Then, the college can apply randomization on each group to have a balance between priorities and fairness. And there can be other priorities as well. The point is, there's a lot of flexibility in how you choose the ordering. In summary, randomized serial dictatorship has lots of benefits. It's Pareto optimal and strategy proof. It's very simple, almost too simple. It's fair to students and it's very flexible if you have other priorities as well. This is why it's very popular among colleges and it works well in many cases. But there is one specific case where there are problems. And this is when you have students that already live in a dorm, but they have the option to either continue living there or to apply for a new dorm. Now, if he tries to apply for a new dorm, he's put through serial dictatorship. And there's a chance that someone will take his dorm and he ends up with a dorm he likes even less. Then he'll start questioning why he even participated in the first place. So you might have a bunch of students that just don't want to risk applying for a new dorm, so they're not participating. Serial dictatorship gives a Pareto optimal solution only if you consider the people that participate, but not if you consider everyone. So this leads us to our final property, which is called individual rationality. And it means no student will get a worse dorm than their current one. If this is satisfied, then you can see there's no risk in participating. And so this incentivizes all students to apply for a dorm. So now our lives are even harder. Can we find a mechanism that's Pareto optimal, strategy proof, and also individually rational? This is our final goal for today. And we'll change the setting a bit. Now we'll assume everyone's already living in a dorm, but they're willing to switch into a new dorm. This scenario is kind of like trading objects. How do you trade to make people happier? Thousands of years ago, before money was invented, trading was how people exchanged goods. If I like your square, and you also like my square, then we can just trade squares. 
But if you don't like my square, I'd have to go find someone else who wants my square, but also has a square that I like. This might be quite hard to find. It might be easier to find a square I like. If this person wants someone else's square, and she wants my square, then this forms a cycle, and a trade could still happen. Cycles can be any size, but large cycles are impossible to find, and that's one reason why money was invented. But nowadays, we have computers, so finding cycles is much easier. Let's try to solve our problem now. Carol is currently living in dorm 1, and we want to find a better dorm for her. She prefers both Alice's and Bob's dorms, though her top choice is Alice's dorm. Ideally, we want to find a cycle that contains this edge, which would give Carol her first choice. Now, we can ask Alice for her preferences, and although she might be willing to trade with Carol, her top choice is Bob's dorm. And we can keep going. Bob's first choice is David's dorm. Now, if David's top choice is Carol's dorm, then we have a cycle with Carol, and swapping along the cycle would give everyone their top choice. But unfortunately, he likes Alice's dorm the most. Now, Carol doesn't belong to a cycle, but we did find another cycle between Alice, Bob, and David. So, if they swap dorms, they all get their top choices. Now it's just Carol, and her favorite dorm is just her own dorm. In a sense, this is also a cycle, and Carol trades with herself, and the algorithm terminates. So in the end, Carol didn't get a better dorm, but she also didn't get anything worse. Meanwhile, everyone else upgraded to their favorite dorm. This algorithm is called Top Trading Cycles, which has just two steps. Step 1 is everyone points to the person who has their favorite dorm. This can just be yourself, if you like your current dorm the most. The second step is to find and remove every single cycle within this graph, so here, this red person is going to be removed. Now we repeat. Everyone points to the dorm they like next best, and then we identify and remove any cycles. This algorithm just repeats these two steps, so it's pretty simple. Now, does top trading cycles satisfy the three properties that we wanted from before? Let's go through them one by one. Individual rationality has to be met, because you'll always point to yourself before you point to a dorm you like less, and then after that, you'll just be removed. Pareto optimality is also met. One way to see this is if you look at the order in which people are removed, and then apply serial dictatorship to this order, we get exactly the top trading cycle match. Because serial dictatorship is Pareto optimal, this is also Pareto optimal. Strategy proofness is a bit harder to argue about, and I'm just gonna wave my hands a bit. Consider this guy. This cycle of people are gonna leave in this iteration. But he can't lie and form a cycle with any of these people, so he can't change the outcome. And then later, when your top choice forms a cycle, of course you shouldn't lie, because you're getting your top choice. So strategy proofness is also satisfied. Therefore, top trading cycles satisfies all of the properties we want. And in fact, this is the only way to satisfy all three properties. There's no other mechanism that can do this. Now, if you like this video, I encourage you to check out my previous video about hospital resident matching, which is a similar problem, but in that setting, both sides of the market have preferences over each other. And of course, like and subscribe, blah blah blah, and if you have any topic requests, please leave them in the comments. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.